Hello everyone, this is Ashini from Chinta.com. In this video, we will learn a very interesting thing. We will learn about taking integration of inverse functions. And the fun fact is, we don't even have to do integration. So suppose you are a non-high school student, you don't know what is integration then also you can do this problem just by intuition, just by conceptual clarity. So in the first few minutes, I'll talk about inverse functions and the conceptual base of integration. And then I will go into solving this problem. As usual, I'll give you a challenge question. If you are able to solve it, Please put it in the comment section. Best commenters are usually awarded every month. So let's get started. First, I'll tell you the problem. The problem is this, that we have a function f from real numbers to real numbers. And this is actually a twice differentiable function. A twice differentiable, differentiable function. Whatever that means. If you do not know differentiation, you might face a little difficulty here. Don't worry. Whatever that means, f is that. And there is another kind of technical condition actually. And the second thing is f is 1 to 1. f is a 1 to 1 function. So it does not have two values of x giving one value of y. So, for example, f of x equal to x square is not a one-to-one -one function. Why? Because for x equal to 2, you get fx equals to 4. And for x equals to minus 2, fx is still 4. So, two different values of x produces same value of f of x. Therefore, it is not a one-to-one -one function. Examples of one-to-one -one functions are like this. f of x is equal to e to the power x. One-to-one -one functions are actually easy to work with. Okay, so it's also given that f of 2 is equal to 2, f of minus 3 equals to negative 8, and the integration of f of x from 2 to 3 is negative 3. Integration of f of x from 2 to 3 is negative 3. So with this information, we want to find out the integral from negative 8 to 2 of f inverse x dx. f inverse x dx. So let's see how we can go about it. But let me first talk to you about the main idea of integration the main idea of integration it's very simple actually suppose you have a function in this case f of x and i'm looking at the range between 2 and 3 maybe i can just make it a little bit like this so this is 2 this is 3 it's given that the function is f of 2 is 2. The function is the height of the function at 2 is 2. So maybe I can just do it like this. So this is 1, this is 2. So here f of 2 is 2, that's given. And it's given that f of 3 is minus 8. So it's kind of here, somewhere here. So if I go down it's minus 8 here. This is 2. So f of 2 is 2. And f of 3 is minus 8. Okay, now it's also given that the function is 1 to 1. So what does that mean? What does it mean to say the function is 1 to 1? I'm just going to tell you intuitively what it is. You will, you have, you, the challenge is for you, the challenge is to give a rigorous argument for what I'm saying. So one-to-one -one means 
that the function cannot have something like this. It can't be like this. Like it can't have waves like this. Why not? Again, intuitively speaking, this is not possible because if there is a wave, there is, there is up and down. If there is up and down like this, then for two different values of x, you will get the same value of y. It goes up and then it goes down. So it should come back to the original position. That is the value of 2. So for two different, maybe this is 2.1, okay? So for two different values of x, you will get the same value of y, which we cannot have because the function is 1 to 1, right? Okay, so this is not possible. So what we are going to do is, we will draw the function. The waves are not there. It doesn't go up and down. It, it only goes down like this. So it's probably like this. We don't know for sure. There are some features of this curve that we are not aware of actually. Is it, is it like this? Or is it like this? That we do not know. Because we need more information about the function if we have to say something like that. There is a distinction between this and this. It's called the convexity of the curve. So we don't know exactly what's going on. We also don't know where it hits the x-axis. It must somewhere between 2 and 3. So that's this challenge question again. The challenge question. Using the fact that the function is twice differentiable. Tell me and the key word is Rolle's theorem, intermediate value theorem. If you are in the uh, ISI CMI entrance program at Chinta, then you must be doing these things in the calculus module. The challenge question is, can you give me a rigorous argument to say that the function will hit the x-axis at some point between 2 and 3? So, there is a there is a value x naught between two and three such that x f of x naught is equal to zero. Just just a side question. You can give a rigorous argument in the chat. Okay. Okay. Now, what is integration of this function? Well, the integration is very simple. It is simply the area under the curve. Area under the curve. Now you might say that okay, why why is this area negative? Notice that the integral of two to three f x dx f x dx is given negative three. So if integration is area, why is it negative here? Well, because the amount of space above the x-axis that's considered positive and the amount of space covered below the x-axis that's covered that's considered negative for example i'll give you a separate picture let's suppose i have this x, x and y coordinate plane and i have a little line here like this so it's at a height of negative 5 Below the x-axis, it goes from 0 to 5. Then what is the area of this piece? Area can be negative. This is called signed area. This area is negative 25 because it's below the x-axis. That's how we uh, assign signs to area. Okay, So it's negative 25 because the entire space is below x-axis. So just like so, this particular area, suppose it's x. Now I'm not talking about the signed area. I'm actually talking about the area. And this is suppose y. So this area is x and this area is y. 
both are positive quantities x and y are not signed areas okay x and y are not signed areas they're just the pure positive number the area then x minus y is given to be negative 3 okay so that is the essence of the picture or of the expression 2 to 3 fx dx integral is negative 3 this is given in the problem right 2 to 3 fx dx is integral of fx dx is negative 3 this is the meaning of it the positive area minus the area below the x-axis if you just subtract them it will become negative 3 great so now what do we want we want to find out the minus 8 to 8 f inverse x dx we want to find out that particular area so what is f inverse x dx what is the picture for that so what you have to do is you have to just turn the picture around so if i just take this this much okay if i just take this let's copy this oops sorry let's take go to a new page let's do one thing let's turn the picture around like so okay so now we have it so this is now the y-axis the y-axis has become the x-axis the y-axis is has become y-axis has become the x-axis there's a little bit of difference actually because uh now the way we have turned it this is positive because this is two right and this is negative usually we are habituated to think that if you go right it will be positive if you go left it will be negative here the way we have turned it it's actually the opposite it's if you if you go left it's getting more and more and more positive y is increasing y is increasing and if you go more and more right y is decreasing okay now that we have that what do we want we want the integral of f inverse x dx from negative 8 to 2 2 negative 8 to 2 what is this quantity that's what we want so we want the area under this particular curve so we want this area and the entire area is positive because it is above the y-axis it is above the y-axis so we want to find out this area so how do we go about it it's actually pretty simple let's drop a perpendicular let's drop a perpendicular this is 3 so first notice so we want this area first okay so what we know is that this particular area is width is 8 and height is 3 so 8 times 3 is 24 right this this rectangles area is 24 from that you can subtract this much so this is y right so the the pink area is now 24 minus y 24 minus y that's a pink area and the here what we have is we have a box like this so we want this total area right so let's do it in green this little portion is 2 times 2 4 and this much is x right so we have 4 plus x so the total area is under curve total area under curve is 4 plus x plus 24 minus y that is 28 plus x minus y that's it 24 plus x minus y that is the area under the curve of the inverse function 
So here is a challenge too. Why did I turn the graph and make the y-axis into x-axis? Can you rigorously tell that to me in the comment section? Okay. So, okay. Now, finally, what is x minus y? We already know the value of x minus y. It's here. The value of x minus y is here. So that, so now can you give me the final answer in the comment section? It's just one line from here. We know the total value is 28 plus x minus y. We know the value of x minus y. You can tell me the final answer. I hope you like this video. The conceptual understanding of integration and how a function and its inverse works and how one-to-one-ness of a function leads to a certain picture. All of these ideas come into one place for this one problem. It's a beautiful problem. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for joining in today. Take care and bye.